Greetings everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. We are back once again with another hot topic that we are hoping and praying that you will um, embark on it with us. And we are just kindly and humbly asking that may you um, like our video, may our videos and may you subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications when we have a new pop-up video and today's topic of discussion is the hunger for god and this is spiritually speaking this is a currency in the spiritual world and all of us should have a certain you know amount of of hunger because that is what attracts God. I mean, everyone in the Bible had to have a certain hunger that um, attracted God. You know, like in in the Bible when 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 David sinned. I think, according to my perspective, God would have chosen someone else to be king of Israel. But what made David special? was his longing for God, his desire for God, his thirst for God. You know, when you read Psalms, it's so the book of Psalms is such a big book. And I think if you were to write a, a love letter to someone, it would be a minimum of 10 pages. <laughs> That's my guess. But when you take a look at the book of Psalms, it's such a thick book. It is it is it is it is composed of po poems and and you know just songs about God for God so you can imagine the hunger and the thirst that uh, uh, David had for God that God said yes I see that you have you've sinned but you know what I'm not gonna punish you for that because I can see that your hunger for me outweighs you know it outweighs your sins so i will go after you i will be with you that's what god says you know so that was the hunger that saved or that kept david in in, in the sight of god and i think that everyone should have that you know it is a currency to buy spiritual things it is a currency. It is what attracts the presence of God, your hunger. Have you ever noticed that when you are sick, the first thing that you lose is your appetite? It is your appetite. So if you today, if you do not have the hunger for God, it means that you're sick. It means that you are filled with something other than God. And... It is time to empty you. The word says, he says, God, I can't really remember the scripture, but he says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. So the Lord is telling you today via this video, he says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And um, I am joy and this is Neville for all of all of you who are new to our page, to our podcast, uh, you will be seeing more of us. And yes, let us take it away. And so spiritual hunger, what is it exactly? Spiritual hunger is a strong desire for God's presence and power, you know. And it is manifested by our dependence on God, right? If you depend on God, then your appetite for God will grow and grow and grow, right? Just like Moses, uh, I think it's in Exodus. Um, he received blessings, but then he was like, I am not, I, I, I accept that I have these blessings, but if it's not with you, if God, if you, God, you're not coming with me, then I am declining, you know, because he, he was 
basically saying that God's like the God's presence <laughs> is is bigger than anything else, right? Having God's presence is better than having other things as well, you know. So, like Matthew five verse six says, "Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled." Right? Yeah. When you are hungry for God. God is attracted by that. And you will receive blessings among other things. You will receive God's presence, right? Which is so important, okay? Now, um, the benefits of spiritual hunger. Number one, people who are hungry will be satisfied and fulfilled, obviously. We read Luke 1 verse 53. It says, he fills the hungry with good things, but sends the riches, sends the rich away with nothing, right? And number two, hungry people will experience the refreshing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we read in Psalms 107 verse 35 to 36, it says, He led the hungry to that good land and they built a city to live in. When we are hungry for God, we establish a place for the presence of God, okay? Because he dwells in that place. Because why? We are hungry for him, right? And therefore, you're going to pray, you're going to do all these things because your soul, your spirit is hungry for the presence of God. Number three, hungry people will influence others for Jesus. When you're hungry for God, you're not going to keep that hunger to yourself. You're not going to keep quiet. Obviously, when you see a friend, you're going to go to that friend and tell that person about God. You know, tell that person what Jesus has done for you. You know, things that you're experiencing, you know, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because it is so amazing. You cannot contain it. You cannot keep it to yourself. Right? And it says... Uh, Psalms 107 verse 38, he blesses them, the hungry, and they multiply greatly, right? As you are hungry, tell other people and that will also make them hungry for the presence of God, you know? And you're recruiting people, you're bringing them closer and closer to God, okay? That is, you, you, you're also uh, making other people hungry for God, but you're also you're also uh, uh, um, making your hunger grow, you know. You're pouring fuel to the fire that is already there. You're making it bigger than it already is, you know. So the hunger for God is so important. Because if you're not hungry for God, then you won't be motivated to read your Bible every day. You won't be motivated to go to church. You won't be motivated to gather with people and talk to, and talk to them about God and what he does so the hunger for God is so important and I think that everyone needs to have it yes <clears throat> and with hunger hunger is such a it's a very delicate state you know um, I remember in the Bible when um, who's this guy Esau. Is it Esau? <laughs> yeah, it's Esau, the one with the with the red soup. Yes. He was so hungry to the point where he sold his birthright. He sold it. He sold it because of hunger. So imagine what we are selling for hunger for the wrong things. You know. Everything is spiritual. If you are selling, selling, if you are selling yourself for something bad, you're losing something good, mm. right? Like, as I said, it's currencies in the spiritual realm. It's currencies. So you have to lose some to gain some. So obviously... If 
Hunger for God is not what you're getting back from all your activities. Then you're gaining a hunger for something else, a hunger for, 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 for love other than God, a hunger for, um, for parties, a hunger for just normal things that sort of erode our spiritual life, you know. And it's so important to gain an obsession for God. You know, it's so important, you know, and it's, it's, it's something that you need to cultivate, you know, and it starts with me. It started with small habits. I had a lot of bad, bad habits, you know, when I was disappointed, I would go to places that I shouldn't go to, you know, I would make my parents even more mad you know, and I think it would have been better for me if I, instead of doing the wrong thing, I turned to the right thing. So sometimes it's not, you know, in our nature, but for us to develop a, a good habit towards God, a good habit, you know, and it starts with, with small things, you know, you just gain the, the obsession to want to pray for an hour and challenging yourself, challenging your, 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 your spirit and saying, I, today I have a goal. I want to pray for an hour. You know, just building that up is you building your spiritual hunger for God. It is very mandatory to have an obsession for God because God loves us so much, you know, God loves us so much. He's so kind to us to give us that hunger, to pour into our mouths that hunger and that desire for us to go after him. You know, when he says, seek ye the, the kingdom of God first, he knows what he's saying, you know, because at the end of the day, he's our provider for that fuel that we need. You know, going after something, it's it takes passion it takes love for that thing so ultimately you cannot go after something that you cannot love you know if you can go after a guy or a girl it means that you have that thing in you that can chase after god and god only you know it is time for us to awake you know god is saying to this generation he needs more you know he needs more like genuinely God needs more, my people. He needs so much more. If you, if, if, if you know how much God works each and every day in all our lives, you would really drop everything because God is making breakthroughs for people who never thought that they deserved this big, that breakthrough. The Lord is, is saving us from, from decisions, from betrayal, He's saving us from disappointments, from even our own family members, from strangers. He's saving us. He's making a way each and every day. So what, what is to lose if, if all that you are, you are gaining, you know, when you're chasing him is him. He is the prize. And I love it when, when, when David says in Psalms 42, verse 1 to 2, he says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for you, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? That is the obsession, God. Are you, every day when you wake up, are you eager to wake up and go to the secret place? Or are you just dreadful? You know, are you just saying I, I'm, I'm just gonna go there for five minutes you know it's it's a sign that spiritually you're sick spiritually you, you're not you, you you're not you, you're not yearning for god you know and what he says is even now we can come to him even now the lord can give you that hunger all you have to do is ask you know it's okay if you do not have that hunger it's okay but now that you know that 
we cannot function without God and we need this hunger for ourselves. We need to ask God and he will give abundantly because he is a kind and compassionate God. He hears our groans from his high and holy place. So if you turn to God and ask, God, I need, I need your hunger. I need the desire, God, to chase after you. I've been chasing after the wrong things and these wrong things have led me astray and I've, 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 I've fallen so short of glory. I've fallen, God, and I, and I think at this point I'm unsavable, but I will try and I will plead with you, O oh God, that, Lord, please take away this, 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 this eagerness to do sinful things. Give me in exchange the will, the courage, the desire, and the hunger, O oh God, to go after you and your kingdom. And he shall do so with his arms wide open. And you know how our God is. When you ask for a small thing, he adds onto it, just like how he did with Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom, and the Lord was like, I'm so glad you asked for wisdom. I'm so happy that you did so. And because you did so, I will pour more. And Solomon was the richest. Solomon was the richest. And he was the wisest. When you go and read uh, um, Proverbs, those Proverbs are out of this world. And that wisdom that, that God granted Solomon was a spiritual type of wisdom. It was, he added unto Solomon. So you can be a Solomon today, now, if you turn to God and just ask him genuinely and say, God, I know I, I do not have much to offer, but I am asking you, Jesus Christ, that please pour into my spirit your hunger and desire, oh God. I say yes to anything that you want me to do, oh God, and I am okay, oh God, with starting with you, oh Jesus, for you are the beginning and you are the end, oh God. So Lord, let me begin with you. Let me end with you, oh God. I need your hunger in me and I do not know how to do it without your guidance. It takes that. It takes your courage, you know, to just go, go to God and just ask him, you know. And also in the, um, Amos 8 verse 11 to 12 it says the days are coming declares the sovereign lord when i will send a famine through the land not a famine for food or a thirst for water but a famine of hearing the word of god so these are the tough times that we are about to face or are facing at the moment there's so much going on today and it would save you it would save you a lot to start with God and to end with God. To go to the secret place and ask for grace. For the grace to be obsessed with our God. The grace to receive the hunger. You know, he says we are like young lions hungry for meat. And he gives us the meat, you know. So... Please, my followers, God's followers, please, he has the meat. He has the meat. And he can provide you with that meat. He is our good God, our loving God. And everything that I say today, it's not lies. It's not something that I've never experienced. My life has, my spiritual life has inclined simply because I asked for this new hunger. I asked for desire for him, you know. I asked to do things differently this time. And he is pouring into my life. He is opening spiritual dimensions I never thought that I would see in my life. You know, he is just inclining my, my, my spirit. And I am so thankful. And my wish, my prayer for everyone is to experience God as I have experienced him. And um, yeah, 
I just hope that everyone will hunger for God and thirst for Him because truly He says He wants more. He wants more. He needs more. He needs more. He needs more. He needs more. Honestly, I cannot stress this enough. He needs more and whatever we're giving Him today. It's, it's honestly not enough. So He needs more and we need to press on and press on and press on each and every day and do it today like you've never done it yesterday that's what he wants you know so the fact that you, you prayed yesterday it, it was not an assurance for today you know so as his as his mercies renew you know so do our prayers they should renew each and every day it doesn't matter if you pray for it yesterday do it again today press on you know that's why he, that's why he's, he calls his house a, a house of prayer. It's not that he he's, he's bored or he 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 gets tired of our prayers. No, he listens. He listens, and just because he's not acting now does not mean that he's he's not doing anything in this in the in the, in the spiritual world. You know, he's fighting for us. The word says to be still, and the Lord will fight for you. You know, to be still, be still and, pr and pray, be still and prepare for what he is doing for you, you know. So I'm praying and I'm hoping that all of us are learning each and every day, you know, if you failed yesterday, it's okay. It's okay if you failed yesterday. He's saying, even now, he's saying, even now, come back to me, even now, approach me. I don't care if you're ashamed. He says, I have no condemnation for you, you know. He says, I'm glad that actually you felt, you, 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 you felt hurt by what you did. Because honestly, it quenches my, my Holy Spirit. But now that you've turned to me, you know, if, if you read the Bible and you do a comparison between, um, King, um, between King Saul and King David, you will see that Saul was, was, was not really apologetic. He was he was he was reasoning. He was like, yeah, but but uh, Samuel took long, so so I had to do something, you know. He's like, yes, yeah, so I made that mistake, but I did it because of that. But then King David was like, I am so sorry, God. I am so sorry, and he was he was in a mournful state. He was mourning because he knew that he could not afford to lose God. He could not afford to lose God. And so he took off his crown and he knelt down and he prayed, he was weeping. And then God said, I will not punish you. You know, even though this has consequences, but I will not take you away from me. You know, because there was a hunger and a desire to be with God, to be one with God, to be in God's sight. You know, so I think it's very important that we all, you know, become like David you know David was yeah David was 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 truly a king and it was through God that he became such a man you know when I read Psalms it's it's truly we can all relate when we all read Psalms you know when we, when we read Psalm 63 he says I long for you God you know so that's why I'm saying Psalms, please do not underestimate Psalms. Psalms can do signs and wonders in your life if you are truly seeking God. You know, you can do what David did. You know, just come to God as you are and he will most definitely make your garments clean. And I think that hunger also is, 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 is connected to consecration. You know, if you definitely want something, you will by all means want to get yourself cleaned up, you know, uh, uh, um, nice for that thing. So we cannot, hunger cannot reside in us if we are not consecrated, you know, because then there's, there's, there's lust, then there's, there's, there's jealousy, there's, there's, you know, hunger needs your all. Hunger needs your all. So that is the topic for today. And um, we are thankful and we are praying that.
that you were praying to God, you returned to him, and you're asking God on your side that Jesus, may you please give your people hunger for you. May you please give people a hunger for you, my God. We know that, that nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. May you pour your spirit upon your people, Jesus. Let them prophesy. Let them see visions and dreams, Holy Spirit, as long as it is your will, O oh God. And we know that you love us, God, and you love, your constant love is better than life itself. So we thank you, Jesus Christ, for this time. And we're asking our viewers that may you continue to just view our stories and our podcasts and just keep up with us. Thank you. My name is Joy. This is Lenny. Bye. Bye.